Sure. Welcome back to the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning again, Rob. Maria Lawrence. Good morning. Good to be here. And the one and only Danny Staggers of the Staggers Law Firm. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Rob. You know, I told you during the break, when I see you, I get hungry. Because <laughs> I associate Danny with lunch and this cake out of Hampshire County that it has taken on a life of its own. By the way, I don't know who this baker lady is. I don't remember her name, but I sure remember her cake. She well, and, and for someone who, as you said earlier, does not eat a lot of desserts, yeah. this is one that you... You this break is, the the rule for this right. Is a, it's a really good cake. What's her name, Danny? Oh Lord, you're asking. You me. Me. <laughs> now you're talking. To yeah, me. but she's great. Yeah, she. And you she, know how to get get a hold of her, so that's really no, awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's a home ec teacher over at Hampshire High School, mm -hmm. and she was the pastry chef at Nima Colon. Right. But she fell in love with her high school sweetheart, and she's back in Romney mm -hmm. to, to our benefit. <laughs> There yeah. you go. So Romney lost Mike Carl, but they gained a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, Romney well, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Romney we'll won. have to see if Mike Carl but, responds but, but to Berkeley that. But Berkeley County won. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good That's save, it. Bill. That's good it. save. Good save. Good save. Good save. Uh, Danny, uh, any changes in regards to elder law, Medicaid uh, funding, or laws uh, in regards to the West Virginia leg legislature or how the money funnels down from the federal government recently? Yeah, because the, the Medicaid laws funnel down through the federal government, but each state can do a little change, a few changes. And one of the rumors I'm hearing is that uh, they're going to do Medi Medicare or Medicaid. I think it might be coming through Medicare mm -hmm. to pay for a person to stay at home. It'd be a lot cheaper. Uh, the person would be familiar with the surroundings, and it would be more comfortable for the person, you know, as as they're going through their final stages. So when you I, say the person stayed, I mean the person receiving the medical care. That's right. Yes, the person who uh, it would otherwise be going into a nursing home, and nobody wants to go to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's there. It's essential. It's it's you know, it's, it's something that we need. How big a lobbying group are the nursing homes? Would there be some pushback against this? I Which think so. Yeah. I think so, Bill. And, and that's the frustration, you know, that you see now because um, Congress will allot money for the nursing home. If you go to a nursing home, we can protect your assets. But I can't protect it if you try to stay at home or go into an assisted living facility. And so this would be, in my opinion, would be really great for them, you know, or ordinary person. Yeah. Uh, what happens is most people don't want to go to a nursing home, but it gets to that point where the caregiver just, you know, just yeah. cannot yeah. take care it's, of them. It's too much. It's just too much. And, and so I think it would be wonderful uh, because you're familiar with the surroundings. Uh, you can stay watch your own tv and mm -hmm. uh, affiliate with people that you know and can come in and see you and not have restrictions on visiting you so i think it would be a yeah. great deal if, if that can get it's you. it's a pretty it's a pretty big leap though i mean is. this is a proposal cms has has proposed not i mean it's very early stages so yes. as we recognize yes. what can happen Yes. In the process, it can take a very long time. CMS, Maria? Um, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. Um, That's so, really bright on your part to remember yeah, that. I, mean, I just know CMS, and, uh -huh. and, and they're the agency that handles the rules for, for Medicaid. Now, this is at the federal level, and not the state level. The well, I've heard federal, the federal level, level, and then the states the state, would, yeah. would, would, would have to accept it yeah. and adopt it. And you, you make a point, Danny. Most people want to stay at home. That's the, the primary place where they want to be, where they want to spend their final days. And sometimes it's not super duper easy, even if you can't stay at home anymore, to get into area nursing homes. Just the, the whole placement process, and as you're well aware, um, what happens to your assets then? Yes. You know, do you have to completely obliterate everything that you've had to go there and spend your final days where you don't really want to be anyway? You don't want to be. You know? and, and another element are the pets. People, <laughs> and you cannot take pets in a lot of nursing homes, and mm -hmm. that's such a valuable Absolutely. part of, of one's well, life. Yeah. I mean, people, uh, the, the love that a pet gives yeah, you. Exactly, yeah. i got yeah. a story to tell yeah. you. Forgive me for telling you this, because I've heard... Your mother and your dog 
no matter what you do, we'll always love you. <laughs> <laughs> and your mother's dog on top of that. Yeah. That's right. So it's, it's complete love. Yeah, that's right. I've yeah. heard something else. Forgive me for saying yeah. this. You put your mom and your dog in, the, in your trunk of your car, which one comes out wagging their tail? <laughs> not your mom. <laughs> not your mom. No. But, but, However, I've never heard that, Danny. Well, I don't sorry. know how to take that. I just want to say it is the official position of this show that you should not put your mother or your dog no, in a trunk. In a trunk. No, yeah, for no. sure. For sure. But, but getting back to your point, Maria, it, 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 it's uh, most people would rather be there. They'd have, like you say, dogs. They could have other familiar things. But let me give you an example also. Just got a call from a fella yesterday. He lives um, between Martinsburg and Charlestown. His wife, she can't stay at home. He's older, he has a bad back, but the only place that's available for his wife to go is Berkeley Springs. Danny, I can't travel over there. But I told him if it were me, I'd get her in and then look for you know facilities. Other places, to, yeah. Close by as time goes on. Because if you're in a nursing home, and again, it's got its, its positives. You're getting 24 seven care, you're getting food, you know, you're getting your medicine and you're extending the life and, and, you know, people can share their love with that person, you know, so. But all in all, most of us would rather be in the comfort of our home. Yes. With our dog. And, with our dog. <laughs> with and our, our mother. Dog or cat. And watching our own TV. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and everybody has that comfortable yeah. couch at home. Yeah. If, you know, if you're they, elderly and your mom's taking care of you, I, <laughs> I don't know what that I, age breakdown okay, is there. Okay, I have to tell, because Danny just told a little story. So when I first started at hospice 16 years ago, oh, wow. um, I did a ride-along with one of our chaplains. And we went to Canterbury Nursing Home mm -hmm. in Shepherdstown, where we were visiting um, a hospice patient, which because hospice patients can receive care in nursing homes as well as at home. Um, and we were there and this woman clear as the day, I, I mean, she just looked at me, she, she shook my hand and she said to the chaplain at the time, you know, he asked her how her day was and everything asked. Um, she was like, well, I'm, I'm doing really well and I'm very excited. I'm going to go and see my mother and father up in upstate Pennsylvania next weekend. And the chaplain's kind of wagging his head. And I was kind of like, okay. So we walk out at the end and I said, chaplain is, are her parents, you know, really in upstate Pennsylvania? He's like, they would be 120 and 130 <laughs> um, consecutively. Way to go, system. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of went along because she was very convincing that that's what she was going to do that weekend. But I, what it speaks to, I think, is um, sometimes people can't live alone. Mm -hmm. Even with the best yes. quality care and yes. caregivers, yes. you know, 24-7. The other thing that, that some people don't realize is just how much it costs it to provide round the clock care sure. when you're wanting to stay at home. Another anecdotal um, story is a friend of mine was a, um, a POA power of attorney and medical power of attorney for someone that was a friend of her mother's and um, her mother had passed and this woman had no children and my friend was her um, POA and and she had to say to her, um, I have to tell you that looking at your resources, you're going to kind of run out of money for the 24-7 care, like within the next three or four months. Now, as it turned out, she ended up being a hospice patient and, um, you know, and, and um, obviously then the care was taken care of. So, but it was one of those things that... Um, that people don't realize the resources that you need um, at the end as well. So That's why we try to save some money. Indeed. Mr. Staggers, I know you have some other things on your checklist too you wanted to talk about today. I do because it ties in with what Maria was just saying. And, and a lot of people say, oh, they're just older, let them go. But they've given so much to our society. We just cannot abandon you know, people as they get older. But we can save the assets. Um, that's what happens with me. A lot of people will come in and they'll say, well, mom's been in a nursing home. It's too late to protect their assets. And it's not. I mean, several of the things, particularly in West Virginia, we can do, which 
I think West Virginia is really progressive in the sense of taking care of elderly people. Is the home probably one of the more valuable assets that we have. We can do what is called a transfer on death deed. It went into effect 2014. Um, it came from a state senator in Wheeling. I'll give you a background on that in a minute. But basically, you transfer something to your children, but it's revocable. Therefore, there's no five-year look back because you haven't given anything to them. But then when you pass, it goes outside your estate directly to the children. Creditors in West Virginia cannot go after assets that goes outside the estate. So in this, and they can't, medic, DHHR could, but with the House, they can't because the federal law exempts the House until you pass. But then they could come in and make a claim against the, the estate to get the House. So it's just a wonderful tool to use to protect assets. And that's something the family, mom and dad, has built up and they think they can leave it to their kids. Why lose that? Why take that away from somebody when they've worked all their life and saved and, you know, tried to protect their assets? So that's... That's called a transfer on death deed? Transfer on death deed. Okay. <laughs> Story I heard, just to give you a little background on that, was it was uh, um, a lady passed in Wheeling, West Virginia. She was in a nursing home. The Department of and Health and Human Resources came in and did a state recovery said sell the house to pay for mom's stay in a nursing home. Well, guess who the son of that mom was? He was a state senator. He came back down to Charleston and pushed that law through, which I think is really good for, you know, the people that you've worked all, all your life for. And is that a legal form that you officially fill out? Can, can anybody fill it out, or do you have to go to an attorney to get that filled out? If you know how to do it, and, and that's going to come back to what Maria is saying, is a lot of people will try to do that, and then they screw it up. You have to know the law to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can do it, I'm not saying, you know, it has to be an attorney, but you want to make sure you do it right. And we've talked about that on yes. this program as yes. well, yes. that there are a lot of do it yourself. You can go out, get a will yes. online, yes. fill it out, yes. you know, hand it to your loved one. <clears throat> and, you know, from, from the people who live in my household with me, <laughs> I, I know can you're say, talking about <laughs> yeah, that, that it just, it, it can be fraught with error when it can. people it can. Um, try to do it themselves. So, uh, again, I'm not advocating one way or the other. People get to decide how they want to to do that. But there's a reason that, <laughs> that there are trained professionals who can help you with that process. And it doesn't have to be a gajillion dollars either. No. I mean, it. No. you know, yeah. anyway. And Will ahead. does a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, he really does a good job. But the point being is is if you can do it, I'm not going to advocate, oh, attorneys have to do it. If you do it right, that's fine. The problem with it is if you do it and then down the road it wasn't not, was not done properly, it's going to create problems for your family down the road is what's going to be the problem. Danny, you have a list, but the, one of the folks on Facebook just asked a good question. Long-term care. Are you a proponent of long-term care insurance? It, it, it's funny because when the, the laws were changing – with Medicaid and, and protecting assets, that was the, the scheme was to do long-term care insurance. The problem you face with long-term care, it gets expensive as you get older. I mean, if you got it in place, it's great. Uh, I had a lady one time, she, she purchased long-term care from J.C. Penney, paid $50 a month. It never, never could go up, the premium, but the um, benefits would always increase to meet your needs. She ended up going to Homewood in Hagerstown, which was a progressive type of facility in Hagerstown. But um, if you could do it, yes, by all means, because that will pay for you to stay at home. That will pay for you to go into an assisted living. So it is a good proposal. There's been some changes on that long-term care insurance now. It is um, that it, it can be like a life insurance. If you don't use it, then it rolls out to your family after your past, which is really a good good scheme i did do. not realize that i did not realize it's transferable check with you know several okay. people mm -hmm. i i probably know. every plan is i think you have to get a, an actual plan that does that though that's right. yes. yeah, you can't right. take your regular life insurance and Say, make no, it no, i was yeah. talking about long-term insurance yeah, yeah. Long -term. no but it it you're right yeah ha it has to be mm -hmm. set up at the beginning so um if you can that's great uh i have other people that it gets cost prohibit prohibitive as you get older uh because 
you know, the payouts is going to be more uh, possible or possible, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, you want to look at your plan. But I've heard this. I've got one guy I could recommend. I don't want to recommend names on the radio right here. Yeah. But they're, just look around. Sure. It, it's kind of like I remember this guy from Morgantown, Sam Chico, Chico Dairy. Shop around. You just got to shop around, you know, to see what you can find. And, and don't just get settled on one one sure. entity, you know, to do that. Yeah. What else is on your list today, Dan? <laughs> I always make a list. I know. you. I see it. I can see it. <laughs> Sorry. It's in the, you're an attorney. You better have a list. Well, the other thing, and, and I tell everybody that, that comes in, keep it simple. You don't need to do anything fancy. Uh, the transfer on death deed, power of attorney. And the reason I say power of attorney, because mom, mom would not just say, I want to go to a nursing home. So you got to have somebody to step in and take care of her financially and medically. So I like to have a power of attorney. Those two items, I can protect you. And, and the power of attorney has to have several things in it. Who's eligible to be holding the power of attorney? Well, if you want somebody you trust, you know, first thing. Because they're going to be the ones making the financial decisions for you and medical decisions for you, too. And, and so you want to make, you know, because you don't want to give it to somebody that's going to steal from you. In today's world with West Virginia, they have cracked down on the powers, powers of attorney abusing their authority. And so you don't want to go in and start sealing. But up front, you want to make sure that person who's your power of attorney will be working for your best interest. So it doesn't have to be a relative or an no. attorney, for instance. No. It could be no. anybody. It could be anybody. Somebody you trust. have to be an adult, though. I think you'd want an adult. I've got my six-year-old in my power of attorney. <laughs> no, I don't think got Tonka to. trunks everywhere. Well, and I would, I would add in uh-huh. that you also need to have an advanced care plan yes. that you work on with that power of attorney yes. so that people know what you want. Yes. I mean, yes. that's sort of a big thing that our hospice social workers do. But sometimes you get to the point, you have a catastrophic event, and you know someone has a debilitating stroke and ends up and if if kids don't know or family members whomever is in charge don't know what their loved one wants yes you need to you need to do that for them out of the ones you love that's a great point i I just on a personal note i remember right before my father died he was in a coma basically and my mother was the one who had to make the decision on whether you pull the plug or not. I just remember her anguishing over that for days, yes, saying yes. at my father's bed, can you tell me what you want me to do? Is there mm-hmm. some yes. way you can tell me? That's yes. a tough decision. It you're you're a, playing it God by yourself in that yes. situation. It is. Yes. It really is. And, and what's funny, Maria, just as a follow-up, as a history, that was it started out as a living will. That came out of New Jersey. That's right. Uh, the Karen Ann Quinlan case. And, yeah. and the first state to pass a living will statute was West Virginia, which was kind of neat. But now we have what is called the advanced directive, which we can choose what kind of um, things we want. Do we want, you know, a feeding tube? Do we want pain medication? So it's really come along very well. It really has. Yes. And and so if if Terry Ann Chavo had a living well in Florida, that whole flo- uh, fiasco would not have happened. Because mm-hmm. you make your decision ahead of time. You don't want to put the burden on, like, your mother or anybody else. Now, is this done through your lawyer or through your doctor? or You can or do it yourself. And, again, we'll go back to what Maria was saying. It is online. You can do it. You know, you go in, you fill out a lot of information as if it, there's a fallback, who makes the medical decisions. But the ones that do not want to use the Internet uh, online, would you go through to your do- uh, your lawyer to do Turn. this? And, and okay. every time I have gone in for even the most routine procedures, they're yes. asking now, yes. do you have this? Yeah. And if you don't, they'll hand it to you. At the doctor's office, the but the hospital. That comes back to my point. Is that registered with your attorney or registered with your doctor? Well, let me back up sure. on that. A couple yeah. things. And, and by West Virginia law, the doctors are supposed to ask you if you have a living will mm-hmm. or advanced directive. Mm-hmm. It When you get an advanced directive or living will, give it to your doctor. Give that's it, that's give my it point. It your, looks like that would be more Bill successful than with an attorney. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. give it to your doctor. Take yeah. it to the hospital. Yeah. The reason for it, and I learned the hard way, is uh, those records are pretty much around the United States now. It's, yeah. you know, the yeah. protected privacy protected. But they're around among the medical f- field. They're not among the attorneys. So that was that, my that's point. Right. That's, that's right. my point. Is if you register with your attorney, how does it get to your doctor? You want to give it to yourself. Yeah. You want to take that over. Give yeah. it to your doctor. So it's on record. Yeah. <laughs> Another funny story. I'm so sorry. But I went to a facility down in, well, I went to Duke University. 
they had all my medical records right there. And the crazy thing was, I give blood all the time. And I told the doc, my blood pressure goes up when I give blood. Oh, we're going to give you Xanax. You know what was on the medical records? I was depressed. So it's, oh. your, it's that record is, is, is yeah. going to circulate. It's going to be out there. So yeah. 30 seconds, Danny. What can uh, people do to contact you? Uh, Daniel Staggers or Danny Staggers, I prefer. Uh, 133 East John Street, Martinsburg, West Virginia, 304-267-3915. Email address staggersmartinsburg at gmail.com. Do you have any seminars you're doing in the near future publicly? I don't know of any right right off the top of my head. I mean, you know, because of COVID, I got away from doing that. Sure. So I need to do because I want to tell people. I just, so many people are ignorant of these laws, and we can protect the assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a better way to do it, right? There is, there is, all the time. Danny, thank you. Thank you. Hang out a second. We'll be back with a final goodbye. With Danny okay. Staggers here. Speaking of what we were talking about, that might not have been the right way to phrase that. I was going to say a final <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> that conjures up not the wrong Not that kind of final. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching, for listening. And thanks to our producer, the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, to our last guest here, elder care attorney, Danny Staggers in Martinsburg. Danny, what's the phone number to reach you, sir? 304-267-3915. Are you ready for your final goodbye? I'm ready for that final goodbye with a groom. Bill and Maria, are you ready for your final goodbye? Indeed. Not just yet. Can I, can I hold off on that? Let's do another show tomorrow then. What the heck? Hey, the Dave Ramsey program is next. This is Talk Radio, WRI Martinsburg and TV 24-7.